Hi everyone, thanks once again for joining us on our YouTube channel. As always, I'm Semaganda Joseph. Today I'll be showing you how I made my first 40 million in goods farming. You know, goods farming is one of the ventures where if properly managed and you invest in your money, the chances of you getting back your money are so high. But that's only possible under one condition of proper management. Because we know management is the most important key to success in any project. You should have very, very good management in order for you to succeed. So in this video, I'm just sharing ideas because I know that certain ideas can work for you or they can't work for you. So it's just a matter of sharing idea. So just take some and use the ones which will help you those which won't help you and ignore it so ideas can be life-changing at times all we need is just one more in a series of good ideas make sure what you do is a product of your own conclusion not mine don't say bgm said this or this no make sure that whatever you do is a product of your own conclusion not to do what someone else says take what someone says process it think about it Ponder it. It makes you wonder. It makes you think. Then it's valuable. Then when you go, take action. But make sure the action isn't what somebody told you to do. Not what I tell you to do. Make sure the action is a product of your own conclusion. To form your philosophy, you got to think. You have to think about whatever kind of videos you are watching and whatever you are seeing in your project, in any project, even if it's not in your livestock farming. So, you have got to process the ideas because we watch the value farm, we watch the harm and building farm, lakeside farm, kamate, dairy farm, and different people who are doing a farming. Then we process their ideas and then we see which one are applicable to our farms and then we process them and decide upon what exactly we are going to do. So, this whole process over a lifetime Standing way back here when we were children in schools, we attended experiences, the knowledge we got from parents, not whatever your parents told you that you are applying it today, but at least there are some basics which you got from your parents and you are using them today. So each person is a personal philosophy, is the major factor in how your life or how your project works out. You don't need better seed and soil, in fact. When it comes to seed, soil, rain, and shine sun and seasons in the middle of life, that's all you got. Now, what if you bring this stuff that you are bringing, all you got, yet it's all you have? You may be bringing the kind of animals you have. I have locals, I have two, I have five, I have small piece of land, but that's all you have got. All you needed to do. How are you going to manage what you have so that you can get what you exactly want? In not understanding, that's all you have got to work with. And if this is all you have got to work with, then you don't change the seed and you don't change the soil. And you don't change the rain. You don't change the sunshine. You don't change the seasons. Eliminate the errors and replace it with disciplines. Practiced. I'm telling you, you can't start this process of life changing immediately. You can't succeed at your farm immediately. You won't be able to earn 50, 40, 30, 100 millions immediately. Because we know that it takes time to become a better farmer. It takes time to be a better manager. It takes time to be good in management. So all we need is patience and constant learning because we may be bringing the tools, yet even as we are using the tools, as we are learning the farm, as we are doing the managing the pastures or managing the workers, when we also have our own problems or our own failures where we have to adjust and change. So dear fellow farmers, management is key, but even your philosophy matters a lot. It matters a lot. We need to do self-assessment tests and see how we are. I was on TEDx and I was watching fools at work, how to manage workers, 
how to manage yourself and even other people. I learned a lot from that video. So it's very good to keep on acquiring knowledge. Because if we were to think only about the 40 million, the 100 million, the 200 million, not knowing that before achieving that, there's a certain process we have to first go through. Then thereafter, we'll be able to even have more and more and more. Because some people are blaming the seasons, they're blaming the sunshine, they're blaming the kind of goods they have, the small pieces of land they have. But in the actual sense, we have to, we don't, we don't change the seasons. We don't admit the errors. All we need is to replace our errors with discipline practiced. I'm telling you, you can't start this process of life change immediately. After today, you don't have to be the same again, only by choice, if you feel like could, should, won't, that won't help you in any way. So that is called disaster. You got to have good attitude about the past. Use it as a school, not a club. Don't beat yourself to death about the past faults, failure and losses. Let the past, the, let the past be a schoolmaster to teach us not to threaten you, but to teach you. The promise of the future is an awesome force to affect your life every day. And once you affect your life every day, even your your financial status will change, even your knowledge, the kind of friends you attract, everything will change. Without a future well designed, we take hesitant steps. As a man thinks, so he becomes, that's according to the Bible. Nothing is worth than the wrong mentality. So dear fellow farmers, I was able to start, I've been showing you my videos how I started, the kind of goats I had, and then I was blessed. Finally, you can see, I had visitors, that's the ghetto kids manager, and other people from abroad who paid a visit at my farm. I was, I was able to sell certain goats to them, and then I got other people who bought 15, and in total I was able to gather 40 million Uganda shillings. But it's all about good management, because we're not, we know that too much money isn't capital, according to how Hamis Chugund explained that. Too much capital is not, too much money is not capital. Because for me, I enjoy reading, I read about his book, Success and Failure Based on Reasoning. Capital is that little man, amount of money you insert in a business with a probability of losing it or achieving more. Taking a risk, but in the long run, if properly managed, it multiplies. So finally, the little I invested in, or the man I've been investing in, at least I'm, I'm getting it sorry by sorry. You can't get it back at once in a lump sum, but sorry by sorry, you see that you'll be getting your money back. So it takes time. So any farmer, whosoever is coming into animal farming, dear fellow farmers, you have to be patient. You must be patient with your farm. You must be somehow patient with your workers. You must be patient with your animals. At times they conceive, they miscarry, then you save them. But you don't know the cause. Maybe it was sick and you were not able to identify that. Maybe you not do the vaccination on time. So reasoning is also needed as a major factor. Being open-minded is an element of reasoning. A bit of take information and analyze it. What does a miss say? A miss say man. What does Bro Grafton say? What does the bro Julius says about animal farming? So, how does bro Marker say? As you gather that information and that knowledge, that's what an element of reasoning. So, being patient, wide or consistent with what you want, never giving up when you fall is also an element of reasoning. So, taking personal responsibility. I owe myself the responsibility to make myself better and the society where I live. We need to understand that that we have to become better in order for us to get more money, in order for us to dream big or to achieve big, we must become better. So that's where the term personal involvement comes into play. So, dear fellow farmers, we need to keep on acquiring knowledge. We should never give up about ourselves. You should never wait for anyone to come and carry you forward. You don't blame the government for your failures. You don't blame your family for or anyone for your failures or you are not being well, financial or in any, any other situation. You have anyone, you have to be help yourself in this world so that even other people can come in and help you. So the major question is, how do I better myself? How can I become better? How can I succeed? Success or failure is a mere reflection of our reasoning capacity. 
It's our obligation as Africans or as individuals in the entire world to build our nations and to benefit our societies where we stay. So it is within the parameters of it and everything is possible. We are fully blessed like for us who are in Uganda because we have got very good season. The season have been here, how have you utilized them? So success is not what you have done compared to other people have done. <clears throat> because there are very many people who are comparing themselves but for them to be successful, they have to be like a value farm family. They have to be successful like a harm and more building farm. Or you are Caesar, or BGM. No. Success is not what you have done compared to what other people have done. Sometimes we think success is a competition. Competition is a sign of insecurity. We are fellow farmers, you must understand that. So, successful people have no competition. Successful people are committed to what they are doing and they don't compare themselves to anyone. If I'm doing my breeding, whatever I'm doing at my farm, I'm not comparing myself to any other farmer. All I do, I gather information, I admire the kind of work they are doing. If I had 10 and others are having 500, how can I multiply the 10 to 20 to 30 and I keep on climbing the ladder of success? So the problem is when some, some people have 50 or 100, they end up comparing themselves to other farmers, which is a very big mistake, their fellow farmers. So success is not a competition. You must just be complete, committed to what you are doing. And you should, because you have different visions, you have different targets. So we should never compare ourselves to any other person. So success is what you have done compared to what you can do. If you have the ability to keep 500 goods and you are keeping 200 because you have a greater numbers compared to BGM, you are not successful. So dear fellow farmers, let us not compete to compete among ourselves. The best computer is yourself. How can you become better than yesterday? How can you become better than today? So, in a simple term, success is competition with yourself. Dear farmer, success is the fulfillment of the purpose and assignment for which you were created if you were a true farmer. Because as farmers, we are created by God to do this farming. We have so much passion that we can live each and everything. We can live good cars, we can live the dances, we can't go even to the beaches. We, we spare most of our time to be at the farm. Most of us live on the, on some of our functions. And because other folks, most of us ain't using none of these, we think we are doing good. So true leaders or true farmers are not kind of winners, never compete. They are focused on their assignment. Because if you think that you are better because you have more animals and big gym, who deceives you that you, you are successful? No, you are not successful because you are better than your neighbor who has five and you have 20. Who has one car and you have 10. No, that's not success. So success is method between what you are capable of doing and what you have done. If you feel that you can have 2,000 goats, 2,000 heads of cattle, and you are, not, you are having 500, don't think about it. Don't dare think about it that you are successful. So, competition should be between you and yourself. How much have you delivered? How much have you set up as compared to what you can do? So, dear fellow farmers, as you can see in the video, there we, we are selecting the kind of goods which are going to be taken. At least, I'm so happy that we are able to get that amount of money. And that amount of money is not going to be eaten. We must reinvest it back. That's why you see you're buying maize. To do silage, we are buying even the mess stovers, we are buying fuel to do the irrigation because we are going in the dry spell, and paying off some debts, as you know, at least, and paying off the workers and even those who have worked with us. So, dear fellow farmers, this is a very good business which is worth investing in. But before investing in a lot of money, have you acquired enough knowledge? Are you patient with what we are doing? Because this is not a shop where you buy a bread in the morning and sweat in the evening. It will take time. You have to be patient. You have to be consistent. You have to be determined. It is a daily process because they do the sweeping on a daily basis. You have to check your hand more. Have they fed properly? So they will be able to get back your money. So I have never got a chance of having such kind of money in a single cell. But at least finally we are there. So, dear fellow farmers, I'm calling upon all the youth and even our elders who can do this, who have learned. This is a very good project. You have the quality. 
the quality we saw itself. We may not have the best quality goods, but we know in life for us to succeed, we must do what we can and from where we are. So you just have the best, tell the truth, have the quality, and make sure that what you are selling at least is worth what you are asking for. And that comes through quality. So they are fellow farmers. We are able to sell off those goods as we have seen. I never that those people can come. And what I have learned also, sharing knowledge is so good. Because if I was not sharing knowledge, the little knowledge I have, sharing it with other people, those people wouldn't have known me. So being mean with knowledge is very bad. And this gave me more courage because I have understood more that whatever I've been doing, some people outside there and are watching it and they are loving it. That's why they were able to come at the farm and buy the goods. At least make sure that at least you share with your fellow farmers what you know. Don't be mean with knowledge. The more you give it out, the more it multiplies itself. So we know that most people are complaining about a lack of money and they're not complaining about the lack of knowledge. That's why for me, I always follow each and every farmer, whether it be Madame Grace Woji, any farmer in Uganda who has a YouTube channel. I make sure that I follow them. Kamate Farms, I've, I visit Ham and Mobiling. I keep on going even back there because I know he has a lot of experience. And after acquiring that knowledge, I go back to the internet, I make some researches. I'm speaking out of the experiences on what I have seen on the ground. I share the little knowledge because for me, as I say, I will rather succeed by criticism than failing by praise. Someone saying that big you are doing a very great work when you are doing nothing and when you are not even moving. So it gives the pleasure to see that after sharing the knowledge, finally, through knowledge sharing, I have got good friends and finally I'm even getting customers to come at the farm and to buy the goods from me. So dear fellow farmers, whosoever is outside there and has got good breeds and have got some knowledge which you can share with your fellow farmers, please do it. Let us share the knowledge. There's nothing bad. Amis is selling. Very farm people are selling. Even other farmers say, we can't meet the demand for the goods. Let us share the knowledge. Let us make more people succeed. Because even as the knowledge we know, we, we are not born like this. We have been getting knowledge from different people. My friend, the manager of Hasboa Farms in Kakuta. You see, we keep on asking fellow farmers, you know, I have got this problem. How do you handle it? So knowledge sharing is the starting of becoming wealthy, even becoming rich. So through YouTube, those people were able to know me and they came. So if I had hid myself with my goods without even marketing myself and letting other people that I'm doing this and this is how I'm doing it, I wouldn't have gotten this money. So dear fellow farmers, whosoever is outside there, you can open up a YouTube channel, share the knowledge, teach us more. Let, as I requested, let us walk this journey of farming together. Dear fellow farmers, we need mindset change on how we see this project of goods or animal farming or livestock farming. Our major problem, we change without planning change. That's where I was properly hit and I have learned a lot from there. That's why I'm doing a lot. You can see a lot of changes at my farm, even in my videos. That's why we are even able to earn at least something from our projects. If you are afraid of doing it, then do it. This is because not doing it won't change you. If you are afraid of starting farming or going to this extent or growing those pastures, even if you don't do it, it won't change you. Make sure that you do it even if you feel like you don't want to do it. That's what we call discipline. And without discipline, there is no success in any business or even in marriage, in anything. If you fall in love with security, you will never have an adventure. Just know that. Breaking off from the familia is the only way you can experience life. As Madame Helen Keller said, I told you Helen Keller is a brand woman, and she says, avoiding danger is not safer in the wrong run than outright exposure. So life is either or nothing at all. What can be worth than not having a sight? not having a vision. You don't need eyes to have a vision. As a matter of fact, eyes destroy vision because you end up living by what you see and not what you are dreaming. Close your eyes and go to the future. Peter Sanga said, people don't resist change. They resist being changed. The change around us isn't a problem, but the problem, there's no change within you. We would rather be ruined than changed. 
would rather die in our dread than to change our way out of this mess. Whatever you are going through shouldn't be where you end this year. Dear fellow farmers, go for it. You can make it. I believe I will make it and you can make it and we can succeed as farmers and we have a very good amount or very good number of animals so that we can even start exporting. Like the very farm people are saying, you can hear what the projects they are building in. At least you can be among those farmers who be having high quality breed for selling. We must prepare ourselves to make a logical decision. I'm going to change beginning today some things in my life to take me where I need to go. That should come in our minds. We should change. Those who read the Bible, they know Romans 12. Be he transformed by the renewing of your mind. An amazing principle. The word transform here means changed. Key to change. You must change the way you think about farming. You cannot control most of the things in life, but you can control the way you think about it. And the way you think about it controls your blood pressure. And even how you sleep. How you sleep. How dear fellow farmers. This is our course guide now which we are seeing in the video. So we intercropped it with glycerin. Glycerin is very good, as you can see. That's what we call the glycerin. It is very, very good. Once you it's rich in protein, once you intercrop it with the coarse Guyana or Brachelia, you have very nutritious feeds. So it is very important. You can keep such at your farm. You can intercrop it and put it, but don't overpopulate it. It may overtake yeah, your pastures because it is very strong, as you can see. And again, we have some green leaf desmodium, as you can see. So these pastures can help your, your animal to balance between energy and bodybuilding. So that's green leaf desmodium. It's a certain type of green leaf desmodium. So it's very good that if you have Bracaria or if you have Coris Guyana, intercrop it with it. You see the results when your animals feed on them. So that's the, what we call the green leaf desmodium. It is very important to have. So that's also another type of desmodium which you see there. That one overgrows. We are trying to make sure that at least we have a different variety or different sources of protein because I have an idea of making pellets as a way of earning. So that if, if I don't have money, if I don't get money from the goats, at least I can get money from the feeds. If I'm to sell the pellets, at least I know farmers outside. I will support me, I believe in that. So dear fellow farmers, it is of great, very, very, very great importance to understand animal nutrition because without good nutrition, management, nutrition, and genetics, those are the three pillars of animal farming. So that's what we have done so far in the season. You can see how, how far how it looks like. We have already harvested. We are doing the bearing even in the next video. We should to bury it. How far far crawlies. Even how far with our sugar grace. Because I believe by the end of the next week we are going to be harvesting our sugar grace. I'll be giving you the updates. Thanks so much for your farmers for watching. May God bless you for us. Thanks for following BGM Animal Building Farm. Keep on visiting different farmers. Our farm is open over on Sundays. We don't charge a single coin at the farm. No, no. We share knowledge freely because it was given to us freely. All we did was maybe to load the data so that we can see how many more bring Mr. Sema and Grafton and Tina. You can see Julius, Rexide Farm, Madame Grace Woji, all those farmers that come at the farm, bro, Hasbro Farm, those people have come out to share knowledge. Thanks so much for sharing the knowledge. Sharing 